you ever heard of the false doctrine of annihilationism or the annihilation of the wicked? It's taught by the Seventh Day Adventists. Um, something interesting. I used to take notes all the time. I mean, I still take notes, but I used to take notes from sermons. Um, this is. I don't want to lose this spot, but. Okay. But um, yeah, I fill. I filled filled up notebooks just filled with notes from sermons from the various DVDs and stuff that I have. Um, probably filled up like three notebooks full. Anyways, when I was, uh, I had this DVD on hell and I was really excited to, you know, take notes about hell and stuff and learn about that. And I didn't know that it was Seventh-day Adventist. I didn't know it was going to be teaching about the annihilation of the wicked. But I just remember taking these notes and listening, and I was kind of like, huh? Like, stuff doesn't make sense here. Um, like down here, Matthew twenty-five forty-six, he tried to say everlasting punishment. It says punishment, not punishing. So punishment means, you know, they're going to be burned up, and then, and then it's going to be over. It's like if it was continual, it would be punishing. That's, that's how they try to twist things. Um, tries to say Sodom was an example. You know, is Sodom burning today? Uh, fire that had eternal consequences, um, but there's not not eternal suffering. Is what they're trying to say. Um, they tried to say that Luke 16 was a parable. Okay. Um, in Matthew 10.28 they point out that it says destroy soul and body destroy not punish everlasting destruction so they try to say you know that the, the wicked unbelievers they burn up and then they just don't exist anymore it's not ongoing suffering and burning and torment forever in hell which is false so, I'll read this article, got questions, explains it. Uh, is annihilationism biblical? Annihilationism is the belief that unbelievers will not experience an eternity of suffering in hell, but will instead be extinguished after death. For many, annihilationism is an attractive belief because of the awfulness of the idea of people spending eternity in hell. While there are some passages that seem to argue for annihilationism, a comprehensive look at what the Bible says about the destiny of the wicked reveals the fact that punishment in hell is eternal. A belief in annihilationism results from misunderstanding of one or more of the following doctrines. One, the consequences of sin. Uh, two, the justice of God. Three, the nature of hell. In relation to the nature of hell, annihilationists understand the meaning of the lake of fire. Obviously, if a human being were cast into a lake of burning lava, he or she would be almost instantly consumed. However, the lake of fire is both physical and spiritual realm. It is not simply a human body being cast in a lake of fire. It is a human's body, soul, and spirit. A spiritual nature cannot be consumed by physical fire. It seems that the unsaved are resurrected with the body prepared for eternity, just as the saved are. Revelation 20:13, Acts 24:15. These bodies are prepared for an eternal fate. Eternity is another aspect which annihilationists fail to fully comprehend. Okay, what I got circled here is where they're mentioning the Greek. I don't speak Greek, and probably none of you watching do either, so we're not going to care about that. Uh, Revelation 20.10 speaks of Satan, the beast, and the false prophet being cast in a lake of fire and being tormented day and night forever and ever. It is clear that these three are not extinguished by being cast in a lake of fire. So Revelation 20.10 is a, a proof text to refute this uh, false doctrine of annihilationism. Why would the fate of the unsaved be any different? Revelation 20.14-15, the most convincing evidence for the eternity of hell is Matthew 25.46. Um, then they... I forgot about this verse to make it into King James, but we'll just read it. They... Then they, the unsaved, will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Um, I guess I could look it up on my phone. Let's see if it really is that much different. Matthew. I have this King James uh, app on my phone. 
this is a really good app I'd recommend it's just KJV anyways Matthew 2546 2546 and these shall go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into it life eternal okay well here it has everlasting and eternal so still it's the same idea though okay I can see why they use this though whatever version they're using it says eternal on both of them okay so the Seventh-day Adventists might not they might argue against this in the King James Version but it, it doesn't matter there are other proof texts plenty of proof texts against annihilationism but Revelation 2010 would be a good one um, but still the fact remains if believers will be in heaven forever unbelievers will be in hell forever another frequent objection to the eternity eternality of hell by annihilationists is that it would be unjust for God to punish unbelievers in hell for eternity for a finite amount of sin how could it be fair for God to take a person who lived a sinful 70 year life and punish him or her for all of eternity the answer is that our sin bears an eternal consequence because it is committed against an eternal God when King David committed the sins of adultery and murder he stated against thee thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight Psalm 51 4 David had sinned against Bathsheba and Uriah. How could David claim to have only sinned against God? David understood that all sin is ultimately against God. God is an eternal and infinite being. As a result, all sin against him is worthy of an eternal punishment. It is not a matter of the length of time we sin, but the character of the God whom, against whom we sin. Uh... A more personal aspect of annihilationism is the idea that we cannot possibly be happy in heaven if we knew that some of our loved ones were suffering an eternity of torment in hell. However, when we arrive in heaven, we will not have anything to complain about or be saddened by. Revelation 21.4 tells us, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away uh, if some of our loved ones are not in heaven we will be in 100 percent a complete agreement that they do not belong there and they are and that they are condemned by their own refusal to accept jesus christ as their savior john 3 16 and 14 6 it is hard to understand this but we will not be saddened by the lack of their presence our focus should not be on how we can enjoy heaven without all of our loved ones he there but on how we can point our loved ones to faith in Christ so that they will be there. Hell is perhaps the primary reason why God sent Jesus Christ to pay the penalty for our sins. Being extinguished after death is no fate to dread, but an eternity in hell most definitely is. Jesus' death was an infinite death, paying our infinite sin debt so we would not have to pay it in hell for eternity. 2 Corinthians 5.21 uh, when we place our faith in Him, we are saved, forgiven, cleansed, and promised an eternal home of heaven. In heaven, but if we reject God's gift of eternal life, we will face the eternal consequences of that decision. So, annihilationism is a false doctrine. Um, there is a hell that is everlasting, everlasting torment for unbelievers. So, thanks for watching. God bless. Except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.